And I think when I was working commercially, I did acrylics, I did painted acrylics, oils, um, Luma colors, of course. Um, did you use gouache? A lot of black and white India ink work, and, and just uh, all sorts. And then eventually, I finally got into watercolor, because watercolor is kind of uh, tricky there. It, uh, it's, um, it's not user friendly when you first start with it. But it's, uh, it, it's some, there's something so magical about it, just the way it spreads out and it blends with other colors. I was, I was pretty hooked at that time. Now this, um, this, this is probably the first watercolor I did that I exhibited that I thought was good enough to, this was 1984, and I was still working commercially. And uh, I did this from a photograph I took in South Haven at that wooden boat regatta that they have every year down there. And it was a really cool photograph, and I more or less slavishly copied that. If you look at, these are great reflections, I have to say. But I just slavishly, <laughs> I think I counted the number of ripples. And I, I think the outcome is good. I like the outcome, but I had, it was no fun. It was like work. And, uh, but I did about four or five more like this with good results. I hated doing it. So then my friend Jim Markle said, he said, Plain air painting, I'd never heard that word, mm -hmm. <laughs> that phrase. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that and I just, it's, it's, it's so much fun and it's such an adventure. You just, uh, no, I, I'm still hooked on it. So, so a lot of these pieces, I think every piece here started out being a painting from life, but I kind of, kind of uh, added to that, like this particular one here, this was one of our um, sessions, uh, I think uh, it was a figurative session and she did wear a bathing suit, and these were, first I did the, uh, the two minute uh, oh. sketches, uh -huh. just in pencil, and then I ran out of paper, so I said, well I'll put the big one behind that. And then it just sat there for a year, and I couldn't figure out what to do with the rest of it. And I don't, I must have seen a picture of a fish or something. And it just, I just thought that would be cool. So, and I guess that's really the most fun. If you could start with working from life, and then you could add some imagination, I, that's... That's the piece that everyone who comes through the show automatically, like, goes to. Yeah. And it has all kinds of question marks popping right. over their head. And it looks like that might have been a, a pre-planned, but that, yeah. that was the thrill of the adventure of it. I mean, I had no idea where that was going. And there's probably about a third of these are like that, that they just ended up taking a left turn that I didn't see coming. And you, you had that in the Michigan Watercolor Show one year. I did, yeah. I was in Jackson. Okay. At that one, yeah. And, I, and it didn't travel because I needed it. I, there was an exhibit that I committed this painting to. I had to drive to Jackson and get it. So I didn't travel with the Michigan Watercolor Society that year. But anyway. So, uh, and then I got into portrait work. And there's a couple examples of that. I do a portrait every Monday at Grand Valley Artists. And... Uh, Diane Hayworth, is she still here? No, she She's in charge of that. She does a great job. Of oh, wait. Actually, sorry. I thought you meant Diane. Diane Hayworth. The other Diane. <laughs> and, uh, no, that other Diane. The other yeah. Diane. So I've got, I've got probably a couple hundred of these, you know, over the years. And uh, it, it's, it's, I, I just, it's such a challenge. I mean, portraits even though they, uh, you know, I guess they don't really sell. I've never sold one, but they're just such a challenge to get all the proportions. You have to get the proportions really close for it to look like a person. And then, this is, I was hoping that uh, Jack Eppinger would show up tonight. I did this one of Jack, uh, I guess it was in December. And you know Jack, I think I was, Oh yeah. 
piece of the wood carver with the chainsaw. And one day he wore his, uh, he had a hat he made out of a Wolverine, a real Wolverine. He's an outdoorsman guy. And so I, I was hoping he'd be here tonight. I, I'd, uh, I want to give that to Jack. He wore his buckskins and his yeah. Wolverine. Yeah, he's a rug, really a rugged guy. Yeah, great guy, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got a what I call now an art environment over there on Waverly. Waverly yes, and Chicago yeah. Drive. It started as like some things along the road, but now it's a full-fledged art environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, you know, it's pretty yeah. fascinating to see a guy out in the field with a chainsaw <coughs> doing a sculpture. He said people stop, and he sold quite a lot of work that way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, we gave him a show one year. That's great. Yeah. That's oh great. Yeah. yeah. He deserves it. <coughs> yeah. So I think that's... Uh, that's about it, I think. Um, these are, yeah, if, it's, if you have any questions about the work, sure. Can I ask add some? anything, buddy? Uh, only if it's good. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other 68 years, that long. Ooh. And we both love art the same way, and some of the comments we're making just ring so true. People ask if you're self-taught, and it is true, you are, but you do need a little guidance or some advice from teachers, and both of us have been fortunate that way. Some teachers are pretty good, some aren't, uh, but it does help. And Jim and I used to go to Reed's Lake a lot, and Ray Widener was over there. I was 14 years old when he gave me great advice. Draw when you want to, and when you don't want to, I carry that with me all my life. But Jim and I had a couple of offices together, and we were illustrators. You could make a good living doing that. But that whole business tanked because mm -hmm. of everything that you can well, see. Well, every business you. tanked because of computers. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> we're getting close yeah, to tanking change. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, really. but, um, yeah. So he evolved beautifully into this art form here, which is something that takes mm -hmm. that kind of commitment 2,000 wow. Um I look yeah, at it, I, yeah. I can't do it. I do other things, but I can't do this. But. And, you know, when I think of quitting watercolor, for one thing, you know, I always thought when I get bored with watercolor, I'm going to do something else, acrylic or something, it's some kind of opaque kind of paint. So, you know, because sometimes you want to paint over the thing, and you can't paint Ooh. over the thing without really overworking it. But the thing is, I, I, I'm not bored with it. And the other thing is, I have learned so much after 25 years of doing this every day. I never knew I would be this knowledge. I mean, I, I have to say, I'm fearless with watercolor. I will just start splashing watercolor without, you know. But I, I don't like a big, I don't like preliminary work because uh, when Bob and I were in illustration, you have to, you, first of all, you gotta get the job, then you gotta do a pencil sketch, sometimes you gotta do the color rendering, then you gotta make changes, and then in about 10 days, you can start with the illustration. By then, where's the creative energy? I mean, right. the, the, I was really bored with an illustration when I started it. <laughs> so when I retired, I thought, I'm just gonna sketch out on a piece of paper, you know, roughly with pencil, and I'm going to leave the pencil right there, which I do, and just start painting. Mm -hmm. And that's, for me, that's where the energy mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it is still fun. Yeah. So, I like was. that word, fearless. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, with watercolor, it's, it's, I wasn't, I was not fearless when I was doing right. this. I was just very carefully painting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it. paper. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to screw it up. So it takes a while, and I, you know, with people, you know, people that take a watercolor workshop and they think, well, I'll take this workshop and then I'll be a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that plus a thousand paintings. Yeah, yeah. really. Then I yeah. think maybe True. you're a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And uh, I think it takes a thousand paintings just to do one like that, yeah. which is one of my favorites. Because it probably didn't take you more than a half an hour. Which, which one is it? The, the uh, middle one or the first one? That one there. The middle one? Yeah, that one needs to be The one with which it's you did that, stunning. and it looks so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it's doing that. It's, it, here's one more thing about yes. painting on location. Every painting like this, well, I didn't do that on location, but every painting on location that I've done, I can remember the temperature of the day. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, conversations I had with people mm -hmm. that came uh -huh. up. And this mm -hmm. is 25 years ago. Yeah. And but mm -hmm. you take a snapshot of something, you don't remember any of that. That's mm -hmm. right. But so there's something. It's kind of like a time capsule yeah. that's connected to mm -hmm. everything I do, you know, from life. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's pretty nice. It seems to be a lot more fresh when you're you know, not working from an yeah. already static image. Mm -hmm. So even your landscapes, like on this wall, you, you painted from life? Yeah, all of these, yeah, all of these are from life. And, the, and they're all, I didn't really do too much changing on any of these. Pretty much the way they were. This, this one that's, uh, this is the Kalamazoo River one, the third from the end there. That one, I don't think there were yellow trees back there. I think they were just green, starting to turn yellow. But the camp is, I just felt I desperately needed some bright color. So I just imagined those as uh, bright yellow. Mm -hmm. Do you use any kind of masking or do you just leave the paper? Pardon? Do you masking? use any kind of masking when you? When you paint? No, it, it, that's, again, it, that's a kind of a time consuming. That messes with my creative energy, all that preliminary stuff. Mm -hmm. I just paint around negative areas pretty much when I need to have a, a thin line or something like that. And talk about beautiful use of the white paper. Right? Yeah. yeah, well, that's, that's something I always look for, to leave some of the white paper coming through. Yeah. I so. wanted to point out one thing, too, is like, this is one of the simple ones, but one of my favorites, and the reason is, it's blues, blues and green and some ochre, and that's about it. Yeah, it's very, not as colorful. Yeah. As, very limited palette. Yeah. And, but look at it. Look at the yeah. depth. Looks that's natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that one, I knew that uh, because I used ultramarine blue on the water, I knew I had to use a different blue the sky. I just didn't want to repeat that blue, so I used a phthalo blue for the sky, even though it wasn't phthalo blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you, sometimes you just kind of know you know, if you if you substitute one color for another, it's after a thousand paintings, you know. Yeah, or two start to <laughs> them. Yeah, yeah. I have a question, and this is a real question because I look at this all the time. Like this morning, it was so foggy. I don't know how many of you have yeah. driven the area in the fog out in the farmland, and I live out close to it. I'm looking at it. it's just amazing. How do you paint white on white? Right. And uh, the question, I guess, is. Uh, how many shades of white and blue to make, like just painting into a forest that has yeah. a snow, snowfall. That's a hard one. It is, and you you, you use, um, you know, like you, you use warm and cool blues or, you know, warm and cool red, whatever it is, you do that with color temperature a lot. It just cool down the temperature by a little blue or whatever it is. And you could do that. Yeah, I, I wish that Michigan had more atmosphere because I love paintings that, you know, it's, it's hazy in the background and they get such a great feeling of depth. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that much in Michigan. We really don't. Mm -hmm. My daughter used to live in San Francisco and I used to paint there for 10 days when I'd visit. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that field of depth you get is wonderful. And you can simplify the background very nicely. So, mm -hmm. any other questions? Have you ever painted in Florida? Yeah, I, I it's so bright, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, and it's exciting because the colors are different. Everything is the light different. is bouncing everywhere. Yeah, I was I went down there for a dozen years in the winter for starting out with a week and then two weeks and then a month and then nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I yeah, I'm not I got I, I got Key West out of my system, but I love the colors. I mean, there's a um, the, you know, the Bougainvillea down there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I was trying to paint that it, with my, I had cadmium red and the lizard crimson. I, so I went to the, um, the only art supply uh, place in town was the Franklin Variety Store. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. It was the only, and I got some uh, Windsor Newton fuchsia. 
<laughs> fuchsia. fuchsia. Yeah. And I used the fuchsia. The fuchsia were great because it was just so, I, I couldn't get it with yeah. the regular yeah. colors. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a cool thing. And that's, that's, you know, if I'd started this at an earlier age, it would have been great to like paint in the Southwest and True. different areas. The, the, the air is just a different color and yeah. everything is different. It is. And, but you know, yeah, you know, Michigan is great. I'm not yeah. complaining about Michigan, but. Well, for those of you that don't know, Jim's part of the Michigan watercolor signature uh, <laughs> status individuals. And, uh, and we try to have shows in different parts of the state. So this, this year in yeah. April, it's in uh, Charlevoix Circle right. for the Arts. That's, that is a beautiful show. I, I, unfortunately, usually I have to ship my painting there. So I try to get, when I pick it up, I try to get there early so I quickly look around and see, but it's a beautiful show. And did you say that the, the Michigan Watercolor Society is coming to? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. 2028. Yeah. Okay. We'll have our annual exhibition here, yeah. if I'm alive. Yeah. If I'm alive. Yeah. We're all alive. We're all alive. Yeah. <laughs> I think when Mary and I first talked about exhibit, it was maybe 2021, and then she said, well, are you available in 2024? And I said, well, I'll take good care of my health. <laughs> no, you, and you want, I've been dying to tell this, and I don't even know if this is cool, but when I went to GVA to do the guest curation night, right, right. you came up to me afterwards and said, Mary, if you don't get me on the schedule, I might die before we go. And I'm like, all right, I'll go home and find a spot. And here we are. And did I hold my heart as I said yeah. that? Yeah, I was like, okay. okay. Well, it worked. It worked. It did. But, I mean, this is a great, I, I love this venue, and I love a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that are being shown, including the, uh, the high school show that, that, that you do here every year. It's, it's, a, it's, you know, I was so afraid that young people were just maybe digital and taking photographs. They are not. They're yeah. all over the place with art. It's just very cool. No, debut is so important because um, all the talent comes out and then oftentimes they'll lose it right afterwards as they go yeah. to college. Right. Um, so it's always That's amazing. It's a great show. <laughs> so then on Debut's Heels, later on in the fall, I'm doing 20-somethings. Oh, so oh. for those kids out right out of art school that are like, now what, bartending? You know, oh. I had to do it, bartend. Yeah. And, um, you know, you kind of get lost in your 20s, especially if you're an art student, because yeah. it's not a lot for you. And then so I'm having a show with 20-somethings uh, oh, later on. Oh, so we're cool. honoring the young folks and the mid but, you know, Greg, there's nothing more important. I think that's really, um, I, this is not my show. I want to add one quick thing. That, that, <laughs> well, you know him for 78 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I work with grade school kids who have, or did in the past, and I'm still doing some children books stuff, but my wife was uh, 35 years public education. And invariably, I'm sure this is true of Jim as well, but if you walk into any room in the environment and, they, and somebody says, who's the best artist, everybody will point to one person. That was yes. me, it was him. Yeah. <laughs> so when I worked with kids, I would say, who's the best artist, they'd do that. I said, well, guess what? It has more to do with imagination and creativity and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I would have them all draw is aliens, because guess what, they don't know. You don't know what they look like. There so know. there's no wrong yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. And you would believe the creativity and some of the That's fun such stuff. That's a good that idea. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like before they get squished, mm. yeah. they have all this yeah. like. Before it's taught out mm. or whatever, right. all the creativity, because yeah. everything that we're wearing, uh, what Jim's wearing mostly, are these beautiful socks. They're all made by some artist. <laughs> so it's all good. Thanks for letting me add that. Yeah. I like that. Any I like other that. questions? About my show. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I guess I would like to talk about a painting over here, if you don't mind. If sure, sure. Come over. Yeah. I just am mesmerized by the I on this show, so these still lifes. Um, the still lifes? Can you tell me something? Us? Well, they're just so loose and so beautiful and so effective. Oh, oh okay, good. Just well, I'm discuss. Glad, I'm glad you think so. This this one is uh, brutally overworked. This is about as much as I want to 
I just, I, I just, I, I use, uh, I usually use a, a paper that's, um, it's uh, wood pulp based and not cotton based because you can rub out a lot more. And I just kept rubbing out and putting different, I mean, I don't usually work with glazes of color with watercolor. And the other thing that I was kind of focused on at this particular point were lost edges. So I just, I love it when that's you know, it. these edges yeah, just kind of That's move. it, the lost edges. The lost oh, ed that's a lost edge. And it, it, just, huh. it just adds so much to a painting if you can do that. So this, this one I think was pretty straight on. I don't, I don't think I badly overworked it. I, it was a setup exactly like that, except for this, the, the background color was not this color. And I can't remember what it was, but uh, I just, I had them, sometimes I just paint the object and then I put the background in later. I, I figured out how to do that without it being obvious. <laughs> it takes so a while. Rich. But, and, I, and this finally was, you know, a, a dark color around the whole thing, kind of a purple, blue purple. And then, look at this. Yeah. Yeah, those, now I think. That does look like paint, though. It is paint, yep. I, I don't have a problem with white opaque paint. I am not, not a purist. Me neither. John Singer Sargent was not a purist. Homer and Hopper were not purists. Yeah. <laughs> what right do I have to be a purist? So if, that's, if that makes the painting, just go ahead and use a little bit of opaque paint on there. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I also like the way these two pieces have the yellow backgrounds. I don't know if yeah. they were painted in the same right. era. Well, this, this was the setup. This was Dave Bechtel when he first got married to Kathy Bechtel. And I didn't get the kind of grin on his face very good, but he was smiling. And then later I added the can of beer in the, in the wallpaper background. Mm. And the same thing with this one here. Uh, we, just had, we just had the girl in this costume, but I added the cigarette and the radio was a, I don't know, I just wanted it to be a little more narrative than just a figure. So. And this is, this is just a straight on, Watercolor. I didn't leave any of the paper. I'm not even sure I would think this was a watercolor, if I, but I like it. I, I did keep layering and, uh, you know, with glazes to get that effect, but it just came pretty natural. So I'm not too concerned with uh, style. I think style is, you just develop your style. I don't really try for a certain style. It did happen. Yeah, yeah. Just, just let it happen. It happened. It's what happens naturally. So. Well, Jim, talk about the framing. Are you, uh, you know, do you have a deal going with anybody to get some framing? Well, I buy, well, for about, for many years, for about the first 15 years, I framed everything with this metal gallery frame because I liked the way, I, I didn't want the frame to be distracting when I did an exhibit. But I got tired of that, so now I've been buying wooden frames that are uh, pre-made wooden frames. I really can't afford to have, you know, take these things, the frames unlimited. Right. So, I, and I just pick carefully, um, get a, get a uh, the width of the, uh, the width of the uh, the face of the frame is important, and then the uh, the width of the uh, mat is really important. So if you could get that to work, mm -hmm. it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, well, I love that one. It's gorgeous. Thank the you. Lost edges. Lost edges. I love that idea. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's 